Welcome, friends, to Portal to the Past. Time travel with picture book tales from Powell River Public Library and real historical content from the Powell River Historical Museum and Archives. This month, our story is Mary Who Wrote Frankenstein, written by Linda Bailey and illustrated by Julia Sarda. Our location will be the historic Patricia Theatre. Here we go. Today's story will be read to you by Sonia Zagwin from the Powell River Public Library. And after the story, Joelle Sevigny from the Powell River Historical Museum and Archives will tell you about the history of the Patricia Theatre. Mary who wrote Frankenstein. Featuring Polidori, Claire, Byron, Shelley, Mary, and the Monster. Published by Tundra. How does a story begin? Sometimes it begins with a dream. Here is Mary. She's a dreamer, the kind of girl who wanders alone, who stares at clouds, who imagines things that never were. Mary has a name for her daydreams. She calls them castles in the air. Mary loves stories too. She tries to write the kind that she reads. But the stories she sees in daydreams are the most thrilling of all. And where does she go to read and dream? She goes to a graveyard and sits at her mother's grave. Mary's mother was a great thinker. She wrote books to say that women should have the same rights as men. She died when Mary was only 11 days old. Can you miss someone you've never known? Mary does. Mary's father is also a thinker. He taught Mary to read by tracing the letters on her mother's gravestone. Mary loves her father, but he can be strict and stiff. And when he's upset with her, he grows cold and silent until she cries. Before long, he marries again. Mary doesn't like the new wife. The new wife doesn't like Mary either. Famous people visit their London home. Philosophers, artists, scientists, writers. One night at a party, a writer named Samuel Taylor Coleridge recites a strange, eerie poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Mary loves such poems, but she has been sent to bed. She wants so badly to listen that she hides behind a sofa. She and her stepsister shiver with fear at the spine-tingling tale of a ship full of ghosts. For the rest of her life, Mary will remember this night, and she will never forget that poem. To be continued. We have only read a portion of this book for this portal to respect copyright. To finish the story, visit your local library to reserve and read a copy of the book or follow the link in the video description to find out how you can invite Sonia and Joelle into your classroom to deliver an interactive portal to the past. Here we have a portrait of Mary Shelley and how she looked in real life. Mary wrote her extraordinary novel, Frankenstein, or The Modern Prometheus, when she was only 18 years old. 
Published in 1818, Frankenstein is now over 200 years old. It's a very old story. The book that she wrote was astonishing, and now you know the remarkable story of how she wrote it. After a modest start, the story of Frankenstein achieved great success, partly because of the popularity of the theater productions, and later movies, that were inspired by the book. Frankenstein was turned into a play in 1923. This play was featured in theaters for many, many years. The first film adaptation, or moving picture as it was called back then, was made in 1910. It was a silent movie at that time, which means there were no sounds. At the same time as the first film adaptation of Frankenstein was being made in 1910, Powell River was developing as a thriving company town. This is the area that we now call the town site, which is a historic neighborhood. This area has over 400 historic buildings. You might have seen some of them before, like the Romney Hotel, the beautiful old heritage homes, and of course, the Patricia Theatre. In this photograph here, we can see one of the main streets in the town site with the first theatre on the right. It was mostly just a big wooden box. This theatre was built in 1913 and people went there to watch movies or moving picture shows as it was called back in those days. It featured silent movies, concerts, pie-eating contests and other forms of entertainment. Kids sat at the front on old kitchen chairs and the adults at the back. This structure was also known to shake in the wind and was home to many bats which frightened some patrons. However, these things did not stop people from coming back to the theatre to be entertained. In 1928, a new theatre for the community was built. You might recognize this iconic spot in the town site at the corner of Ash and Marine Avenue. This was a big theatre, capable of hosting up to 500 people. Apart from two theatres in Vancouver, it was said to be the very best in the province. Most popular with children was the 15 cent Saturday matinee, where whistles, popcorn flying, yelling, and all the commotion was a common scene. Evening shows were usually for adults who bought seats at 50 cents or 75 cents for private lodges. In 1931, the first film adaptation of Frankenstein with sound was released. This is a poster for it, which would have likely have been shown at the Patricia Theatre. Over the years, many different movie versions of Frankenstein were created and released. Here you can see some old Patricia Theatre advertisements found in the newspaper for movies like The House of Frankenstein, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, and Young Frankenstein. In the beginning, people mostly walked to the theater. People walked just about everywhere back in those days. In this photo, you can see the old wooden sidewalks as opposed to concrete, which is now used. People came from all over to watch movies at the Patricia. They would walk from Wildwood, and Thom and people would also walk from Slyam and all the way to the town site. For people living really far away, just like you saw earlier in the story, carriages pulled by horses were used. But starting in the 1930s, cars became more and more common. Here you can see a lot of cars parked during a sport event in the town site, just beside the Ron May Hotel. Cars meant people could come see movies more easily and travel between Westview and the town site more quickly. There was also a special bus service for nights that played movies. Just like we do today, people lined up outside the theater's box office, waiting their turns to buy their tickets. They entered the theater to find their seat and waited for a moving picture to begin, perhaps to be entertained by a famous story like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, or maybe to watch a play or even see an orchestra. The theater always impressed people with the large foyer, the beautiful red velvet curtains, and the peacock murals. There was segregation between white settlers and indigenous communities. The word segregation means when you separate someone or something apart from another group. At the Patricia Theater, this meant that people from Plum and Nation weren't allowed to sit on the first floor with the general public. Instead, they had to sit apart from everyone else on the upstairs balcony at the very back of the theater. This is also called racial discrimination and it created lasting negative impacts for indigenous communities throughout Canada. 
In the present day, the Patricia Theatre is the oldest continuously operating movie theatre in all of Canada. So we've come to the end of the story for today, but be sure to check out our next Portal to the Past on November 24th.